What is up and welcome back, it's Scovos bringing you another Minecraft Dungeons video. In today's video, we will be going over my post level 100 gameplay review. And before you beat me to it in the comment section, yes I know, I've played this game way too much, but I'm actually having a lot of fun. So the overall goal of this video is to bring you a little bit of high level gameplay to give you some tips, tricks, enhancement advice, and any other useful information I can think of. And if you're considering getting this game, hopefully this video will help you make a good decision. But just a reminder that this game is free with Xbox Game Pass, so I definitely recommend giving it a shot. Really quick, right before we jump into all of these juicy details, I want to mention my new website and coffee brand, thecoffeecash.com. This is going to be premium quality, roasted to order coffee grounds, shipped from the United States, directly to your door, contact free. Any order over $50 in the US will be free shipping, and you can use code SCOVOS for an extra 10% off. So the first thing I want to touch base on inside of Minecraft Dungeons is going to be the missions and difficulties. So inside of your camp, you can use this mission select to bring up the missions, or you can select down on the D-pad to bring up the same screen as well. Now you can see several different missions here, with some secret ones that you may not have unlocked yet. But moral of the story is, for the most part, that from left to right of the map is how difficult it gets, with right being typically the more difficult, with a few exceptions like those secret missions. So Obsidian Pinnacle is going to be the very last mission, and the very first mission, the tutorial, is going to be Squid Coast. Now when you select one of these missions, it's going to give you different difficulty options. And these range from 1 through 6, and on the higher difficulties, they will be increasing in power and increasing in gear and artifact drops. So whenever you're ready to jump into a mission and this screen comes up, it will automatically highlight the recommended power level based off of your character. If you're in a group of players, it will recommend a power level based on the average of your group. So that way it allows everyone to have a enjoyable experience. Unless you're significantly outleveled or playing with a brand new character, you should be able to all have a pretty good time together. Now once you complete all the missions and you power up enough to complete the very last mission in the story, Obsidian Pinnacle, it will unlock the next difficulty. And there's a little bit of confusion surrounding these difficulties. A lot of people think once you beat the game, Adventure Mode is like a free roam, do whatever you want. But that is not the case. Adventure Mode is just the second playthrough, allowing you to complete the missions on harder difficulties with better reward drops, new gear, and artifacts. The following is also applied to Apocalypse. Once you beat the game, the last mission, Obsidian Pinnacle on Adventure, it will then unlock Apocalypse Mode, again raising the level cap of items and the difficulty of the recommended power levels. Mobs in this difficulty will be harder to kill, they will have higher health pools, hit harder, and there will be new artifacts and gear available in each of the difficulty modes. So as you progress through different missions and the story of Minecraft Dungeons, you'll encounter new gear and artifacts. Each one of these pieces of gear and artifacts has a power level associated with it. Your character's power level is the average of all of the items that you currently have equipped. The power levels on your gear and artifacts will influence things like how much health your armor gives you, how hard the crossbow will hit, how long the Gong of Weakening effect will last, or how much damage the Harvester will deal. And with each character level you'll gain, you'll also unlock another enchantment point to spend. So you can see I have 41 available enchantment points to spend top left hand side of the screen next to the purple little swirly. Now you can also see that I've spent 24 enchantment points on this piece of armor. If I want those enchantment points back, I would have to salvage this armor to gain those to spend on something else. Now there are two main types of enchantments. We have common and powerful, and those are pretty self-explanatory, powerful typically being more powerful. And we have two examples here that I'll talk about briefly. We have the protection enchantment, which at level 3 allows you to take 15% less damage, so that's pretty devastating in terms of survivability. We have the common enchantment burning, which deals 200 damage every half second to enemies within melee range. At my level and the enemy's health pools on these difficulties, 200 damage every half second or 400 damage per second is very negligible and almost not even noticeable against these types of enemies. So I would love to switch this out for something like deflection, which gives you up to a 60% chance to deflect enemy projectiles back at them. So not only do you negate 60% of all ranged damage, 
but you also have that chance where the projectile will return to the enemy that shot it and deal damage to them instead. Another really useful enchantment that I could replace burning with could be cooldown reduction, allowing me to use my artifacts more often. So next up we're going to have the soul based items. These items will have the little ghost icon at the top right of the image, and they will say things like plus one, plus two to soul gathering, or require souls. We also have some armor in the game that will allow you to gather 100% more souls to use these more frequently. So we have things like the soul scythe that has plus two to soul gathering, and also has unique enchantments that will heal you based on the amount of souls you absorb. So we could level this up to tier three, gaining 3% health returned as we collect each soul. Since it has plus two to soul gathering, and then we have plus one from the soul harvester, we will be gaining a pretty large amount of souls, allowing this anima perk to be pretty useful, healing us quite often. Now once you kill an enemy, it's not instant that you gather the soul, it is going to be a few seconds afterwards for the soul to raise out of the dead enemy and then float to your body and for you to absorb it. You can see how many souls you have under the relics on the bottom left hand side of the user interface. You see that little ghost icon and then the empty bar opposite of your XP. So once that bar is full, you are maxed out on souls. Certain crossbows will have abilities like chance to deal triple damage based on the souls you have or things along those lines. Now as far as these relics go, they can roll different amounts of damage and I have two of these power level 105 harvesters to show you as an example. So this harvester in my inventory can do up to 5092 damage at power level 105. The other 105 harvester I have does more damage at 5,171, so make sure you keep an eye on the effect duration and the damage they deal. Even if they're the same power level, it could be a little bit stronger or a little bit more useful. So to go over some honorable mentions for enchantments, some that are really powerful or really useful. My character is melee based, so the first one I'm going to mention is going to be Tempo Theft. I don't use my crossbow very often, but when I do, I can throw this perk on there at tier 3, and it will steal 50% of the enemy's movement speed, meaning, meaning that the enemy will move 50% slower, and I will move 50% faster. This allows me to close the gap and start hitting the enemy up close and personal a lot faster and more effectively. Other perks that are really good, for example on armor, which I went over just a moment ago, is going to be protection. So this reduces damage taken by 15%. Another great one for armor and melee builds is chilling. So every 2 seconds it reduces the movement and attack speed of all nearby enemies for 1 second by 60%, meaning they're going to hit you much slower and they're not going to get away or be able to get close to you, whichever one they're trying to do, as effectively, allowing you to deal more damage before they can deal damage to you. Other perks that are going to be pretty useful on certain weapons and less useful on others are going to be your chance on hit or chance on kill. So you have a 20% chance for Radiance to proc, after hitting an enemy which will heal all allies in it. The stronger the weapon and slower the attack speed, the more the heal will be, but since you're hitting slower, it will have less of a chance to happen. So on faster attack speed weapons, it may be less of a heal, but it's going to happen much more consistently. Same thing with the critical hit. On harder weapons that swing slower, it's going to happen much less often, but when it does, it will hit for a lot more damage. So I was running a dagger based build with Radiance on it and just healing my team non-stop. It may have been small heals, but it was enough to keep us and push us through pretty hard content for the levels and power levels we had. So it was really nice having a build like that in a group of damage dealing ranged characters to keep them alive and for me to be able to tank a ton of damage. So to give you an example of what I'm talking about, I use the Gong of Weakening, which will lower the enemy's defense and decrease the damage they deal. So that's a win-win for a melee character. I also use the Deathcap Mushroom to greatly increase my attack and movement speed. In combination with that, I also like the Dancer's Sword, which increases attack speed, which is going to be the Relentless Perk, which allows you to a 10% chance to gain 50% attack speed after a kill, and this can go up to 15 seconds. In combination with that, I have Sharpness, for more damage, Radiance for the chance to heal, and Critical Hit for the chance to deal triple damage. So when I normally attack an enemy, my damage is about 1000 to 3300 for crits. 
but when I use the gong weakening, that triples to 3200 to 9700, and then I can use the mushroom to attack much faster, and you can see all of the crits and all of the heals happening pretty often. So as you can see from the gameplay in the background, this is Apocalypse 6 and I'm just destroying these enemies. I can pretty much just walk right through them, killing everything in my path. Between the shock powder stunning them, the attack speed from the mushroom, and the gong of weakening reducing the damage they deal, and increasing the damage I deal to them is just devastating. If I can get armor that increases soul generation by 100%, and use that switching out the shock powder for the harvester, I can explode with the harvester very often for a ton of damage. Using the harvester and the gong in combination will one shot just about any normal mob that's within close range. And trust me, I plan on perfecting this build and bringing you a build video and guide so you can do this for yourself and enjoy the madness. Now if you're looking for different ways to farm XP, the redstone mine is going to be one of the best ways to do this. You could even AFK this method by finding mob spawners in a small confined area, holding down or rubber banding the A button so you continuously melee attack as the enemies spawn in and walk towards you. Or you could just play through this level normally over and over, killing the mass amount of mobs that spawn. Now personally, I would just much rather play the game myself and run through the secret cow level and gain XP through here. These mobs are all going to be melee characters, so you can just run up and melee them at free will. If you're a ranged character, you take almost no risk because the cows don't have any ranged attacks. So you could run through this level multiple times, killing plenty of these cows for large amounts of XP. And typically you can run this on a difficulty or two higher than what you would normally do since they don't have those ranged attacks. You might have an issue with the boss fight because the boss hits very hard and has a very large HP pool, but you don't have to complete the mission to gain XP. So you could just run through this level, kill all of the cows, gain a mass amount of XP. Once you get to the boss, you could just rinse and repeat if you can't kill it yourself. So leveling up in Minecraft Dungeons, the only use for that is going to be gaining more enchantment points. So if emeralds is what you're after, you can go ahead and start the mission The Creepy Crypt. The Difficulty doesn't really matter here because you're probably going to scrap most of the weapons and gear you find anyways. So go ahead and load it up. A strong crossbow is really going to help you through this mission because there are a lot of creepers. You can head straight towards the objectives and then once you get to the first objective, you flip a switch and you're guaranteed a good chest after killing a few waves of enemies. That gives you an item to scrap and a few emeralds from that chest. Head towards the next objective just a few minutes into the mission and you can do this in one or two minutes if you're really fast and efficient. After clearing another wave of enemies, you go to a secret room with another chest, a mission objective, and several vases. These vases all have a good amount of emeralds as well as the chest dropping another item you can salvage for even more. So that's going to sum up everything that I can think of. If I miss something, make sure you drop it in the comment section and also let us know what your favorite builds and enchantment combinations are. And if you want to see more content just like this for whatever games I'll be playing, make sure you click that subscribe button. It really does help me out quite a bit. And if you like this video in particular, you can click the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you're more than welcome to click the thumbs down. But whether you did click or didn't click anything I mentioned, I still hope you have a good evening, afternoon, morning, night, or whatever it is, wherever you are. But thank you for stopping by, and I hope to see you in one of my next videos.